Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the IWC Pilot's Watch Mark 16 Spitfire. You can see this stainless steel IWC Pilot's Watch and purchase it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right-hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full listing for this Mark 16 Spitfire, as well as the high resolution images, accessories included with the sale, and complete pricing details. Now on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see the number one trait differentiating this watch from its predecessor is case size. Going up from 36 millimeters to 39, it really does change the watch's stance on the wrist. Now that's not inclusive of the crown. 39 millimeters across from nine o'clock to three o'clock, the watch is still as slim as its predecessor. 10.5, and like its predecessor, it wears slimmer than that. Thanks to the step of the case flank and the slope of the bezel, the watch can easily slide underneath any kind of dress cuff or formal sleeve. And in its Spitfire aesthetic, the watch is particularly well suited to formal attire. Now from lug to lug, it does grow a bit. So 48 mm millimeters from extremity to extremity, but with the IWC Pilot's bracelet, it wears larger than that. Now there is a rigid outcropping on each edge that represents the outermost limit of the watch laterally across the wrist. When you measure between those rigid outer limits, then you get a watch that wears approximately 51 millimeters from lug to lug. So it does wear a little bit bigger and it does have a little bit more wrist presence when it's on the bracelet. Now the watch has wonderful substance to it and the bracelet serves to nicely counterbalance the timepiece on the wrist such that it really has no tendency to want to pivot or porpoise. Very secure, very handsome. There's also a certain ergonomic quality about this bracelet that can't be overstated. You can see the size of the links individually beautifully faceted and there is some contrast going on between the high polish of the outermost surfaces and the satin finish of the tops. There's also a fantastic ergonomic refinement on the underside, if I can show these to good effect. You can see how the channels between the links are quite broad, such that it has no inclination to pinch skin or pull hair. Moreover, you'll note that a feature brought over from the GST line, you can see these little dimples on the underside of the bracelet, probably better from this angle in the light but you can see these dimples on the underside of the links. These allow each individual link to be removed for micrometric precise sizing, or should you just wish to extremely closely clean the watch and take everything down to the metal, separate each piece and clean it, you can easily do so using quite honestly just two toothpicks, no need for intervention with a screwdriver. Now the bracelet is also beautifully finished on its clasp portion. Engine turned on the inside, satin finished, on its absolute bottom, you can see the IWC marquee engraved, and there is a trigger to release it such that it's not friction fit. When closed, it's very secure. It's also low in profile for a slim, elegant appearance on the wrist. Again, that trigger is your insurance policy against accidental deployment, not friction fit, so you must positively release it to open it. Now, the case of the watch itself, you can see this is an unrefinished timepiece, features small polished highlights, but the dominant aesthetic is brushed satin metal. You'll also note that the dial, in true Spitfire fashion, is a little bit upscale compared to the standard Mark 16. Now with the Mark 16 changing over from the predecessor, we see the elimination of the Arabic numeral 6, elimination of Arabic numeral 9. We see the triangular index pushed up into the hour track. So this is your basic Mark 16 refinements, but the Spitfire takes it to another level level with exquisite dial finish. Now there's brushed seconds outboard of a concentric circular guilloche that runs beneath the applied numerals of the hour track. All of those numerals and the two indices as well as the triangle at 12 o'clock are fully loomed so the watch is a bit of a torch in the dark. In addition, thanks to the broad sword hands at center, which have immense plots of loom. But even as you move towards the center, the finish of the dial changes plane and texture, and you have a beautiful circular engine turning on the center dial. Extremely handsome. This is an upscale take on the Mark 16, in tribute to the great Spitfire fighter that won the imagination of the world during the 1940 Battle of Britain. So the Spitfires are your upscale, somewhat more posh IWC pilot's watches. And in the Mark family, that just means a dial that's quite simply scintillating and aesthetically distinct from its standard brethren. Now inside is an IWC caliber 30110. 
It's based on an ETA 2892A2, but heavily modified by IWC in this application. It has a soft iron cage. You saw the solid case back a moment ago. And that soft iron cage helps to make the watch more resistant to magnetic flux, so resistant to magnetization of the hairspring. It's 42 hours power reserve when fully wound, bi-directional automatic winding, so very smooth. It has no rotor wobble. There's a hacking seconds function when you screw the crown out to extremity. You can then pull it to the outermost position, stopping the seconds. You can synchronize precisely to a known accurate reference time like an atomic clock. And it also has, in the second position, a quick set function for the date. So you can rapidly correct the watch should it run down or encounter an irregular length month. You can see and you can purchase this IWC Pilot's Watch Mark 16 Spitfire on our website.